Okay, I need your attention. This is a very important tonight, and I have to talk to you. Anyway, I hope you can hear me better. I hope the wind's not blowing because we have an all-out alert. It is very important that we talk tonight. It is Tuesday, health and wellness and a treat. And the big announcement is this. Welcome to my world. Come on in. My name is Colleen, number 33, and I am in development. Um, this is the pre-pre-launch of my book. The book is called If You Only Had One Year, and I Am My Mother. It is about a mother being in remission to the National Register of Historic Places while in remission. And it is percolating at my editor in New Jersey. And um, it's on its third edit, and I just can't wait. Hopefully it'll be fall, early winter before I can launch the book but I am learning all these tools. This one here is called um, live streaming on Facebook. And I will have my first podcast being recorded this Thursday night with a surprise guest and I'm just very excited. But today it's health and wellness and a treat and let's get started. <sighs> Fighting to live. Um, I chose when my son was two years old and I was given a year to live, I chose to teach him how to fight um, something uh, as opposed to fighting cancer. I chose to teach him how to fight um, issues. And it was very easy to pick one. So I picked how to save a depot. And it was quite a protest and it's in the book. And so we, it, was a, it was quite a journey and you'll read about it in the book. It was, I even chose, chose to teach him how to fight um, an Art Deco hospital, how to save that. We even picked how to save uh, garbage. So he brought home worms and we kept them underneath our kitchen sink. Um, and it was all thanks to Jerome Bodingheimer. He convinced us to keep worms underneath our, our sink. I could have, um, Anyway, we won't talk about Jerome in that light tonight. Um, I also taught him how to march for peace. Um, we made scrapbooks. We collected all the names of all the dead soldiers. It was really something because 9-11 happened um, very soon after I became happily divorced. Um, so we collected, you know, teaching him about war, how to march, and we stomped the ground and you know, how to, how to fight and be angry with outside of our bodies. And it was just a way for me to be angry with him on things that we, you know, thought were important at that time. And really we, we did this for most of his childhood with me. We collected names and I had him learn their names and repeat the names and just how to get the anger outside. And it was always about an issue. So protesting was very big. And we fought, and we fought, and we fought. And I said, you know what, Adam, if we can win one time in our life, and I always kept my, the one time I was the winner in my whole life, I always kept my fourth grade time. I was number one. I've only been number one one time in my life, one time. But I kept it handy. This is going to be its own podcast. So anyway, you know, it's very important when we're, talking about health and wellness to try to have that feeling of um, the times that we lose. But I always said, show me a good loser and I'll show you a loser. But you know, it is important to teach our kids how to fight for something, but an issue, a game or a, um, but sometimes in life like cancer, it's not always easy to, to teach kids how to, how to fight something that we know we're gonna lose. Because let's face it, you have to die of something. But I almost died um, protesting. So I know how hard it is to fight. And, um, and my family did not take that lightly. And you'll, you'll read about that in the book. Um, but we never fought people. Um, you know, we protested our rights to protest. And we had a lot of, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of time put into it, you know, a lot of time but you know when you do, when you fight cancer for as many years as I have been doing that um, you know what else you're gonna do so I'm glad we picked that for our health and wellness today I wanted to tell you that 
this most recent debate with the COVID shot, um, it has been quite a debate. And um, for my health, there just was not a shot that was going to work until today. So today I want to announce that I was able to get the shot. And I got the call. I had my name out in four different hospitals for the Johnson & Johnson shot that was going to work for my health and for my uh, side effects that my doctors felt would work the best for me. And I was able to get it. And when I got the call, I must say, I actually cried. And um, I did. I jumped for joy. But in the world today, there are a lot of my friends that um, are on the other side of that. So I know their pain. You know, I know what it's like to believe in something and they're so right about it. And I just, I so can relate to that. And I so can relate to that feeling. And so I just want to know, I want you to know that I understand this side of it. And I, I just so want you to know that I am with all of these issues in spirit. And um, I just wanted to share and be honest with my um to my grandkids who I'm making this for, that I have come to this place, that I would rather want my grandkids to know that in life sometimes you have to seek a relationship with the world than to seek always being right. And um, that was probably the hardest thing when I crawled home from my protest in a pain of loss, um, knowing that I would have rather kept my relationship with my family than to die being right. And today, when I came home and I knew after meeting with my priest, and because it is kind of a painful that thing that way with the Johnson and Johnson, and that's a whole nother debate that we're definitely not gonna talk about. But I had peace with God and peace with myself. And, um, but when I came home today, and I could hug my dad and just know that I was doing this for a deeper love for my dad. And um, I just feel so good about it. And I'm just so happy. So sometimes, um, kids, you just have to have a relationship with the world. And um, I support the decisions my friends make. And I stand with them in solidarity with uh their protests, and uh, I just think we live in a great country to be able to have a relationship with the world and to not be, um, to have our anger hurt our health and our wellness. So when you pick your protest, not only for yourself, but I want you to think about your loved ones that you come home to at night, and I want you to really weigh heavily on your protest. Um, and when I almost died, um, when I was protesting, I looked up at the police officer that night um, at three o'clock in the morning and I did surrender. And um, I'm glad I did, but I know how painful surrender is. And um, I know that it was hard for me. And I know that those of you who don't surrender, you know, I admire that. And, um, but I also know that you'll know when to surrender. I treated myself today, and when I got home today, I just want you to know that surrendering isn't all that bad. Um, lastly, uh, I also want to tell you that I was so happy about my surrender today with finding a shot that worked for me in my heart that I called my neighbors up and my son and I have been working on things that we can do when we socialize with the world for a treat. And tomorrow when I go to exercise with my Pete and Becky's gym, um, I'm going to share with them that I found a no uh, 10 grams of sugar strawberry daiquiri mix. So him and I are coming up with ways to socialize with non-alcoholic drinks. So we had a treat and so I'm going to say that when you surrender and you lose your little protests out there, come up with a treat. For example, tonight, my treat is from our Goose Gang Gourmet 
jelly beans. So thank you for my Tuesdays, health and wellness and treats. And I'm really enjoying our gatherings on my digital extreme home, a place for me to be able to communicate with my family and friends. And eventually, by the end of this week or next week, I'll be moving us over to my pre-launch uh, page for I Am Rare Presents. So thank you for your time. And remember to like, share, and I hope to see you there. This is so much fun. I'll do.